today we are going to discuss about extensions of the two variable linear regression model regression through the origin it is also known as zero intercept model why because in such a model we do not have an intercept term hence the regression function when plotted on a graph starts from the origin itself because we do not have any intercept term as we can see in this function that yi is equal to beta 2xi plus ui there is no intercept term here there is no beta 1 so this is called regression through the origin or a zero intercept regression model and beta 2 here denotes the slope of the regression so beta 1 would have shown the intercept term which is absent here and beta 2 is denoting the slope of the regression function okay and one more thing is that regression through the origin or a zero intercept model has its own limitations due to which in most of the cases we prefer OLS regression over regression through the origin since OLS regression that is ordinary least square regression about which we have already discussed in the previous classes now OLS regression allows an intercept term in it that is why it is often preferred since regression through the origin has a few limitations one major limitation is that here we are assuming that there is no intercept term and the function has to pass through the origin but in real world we do not find so many examples of these cases in most of the cases we would find a relationship where intercept will have to be present to explain the relationship between regressant and regressor this assumption of zero intercept can lead to biased estimates wrong predictions especially when the true relationship has an intercept term this is the reason why a non-zero intercept model is preferred over a zero intercept model so in most of the cases we prefer a non-zero intercept model but there are a few cases when a model with zero intercept can be used or is suitable in those cases one of those cases can be milton friedman's permanent income hypothesis which states that there is a proportional relationship between permanent consumption and permanent income of a person r square for regression through origin model so r raw r square is equal to sigma xi yi whole square divided by sigma xi square sigma yi square so this is how r raw r square is calculated now in the case in the regression models where there is no intercept present we use raw r square instead of the conventional r square which we used in the case where intercept was present in the model and we know that by r square we mean coefficient of determination so in this case in the case of regression through the origin model we use raw r square by raw r square we mean that this r square is unadjusted it is in its raw form whereas the r square that we used in the case where intercept was present there that is adjusted that is adjusted from mean but this is in its raw form and this is how it is calculated so the difference between a model 
without an intercept term and with an intercept term could be in the case of regression through origin model we use rho r square and in the case where intercept term is present we use r square the other difference is where intercept term is present in such a model sigma ui hat is always equal to zero it has to be zero but that is not the case here that is not the case in regression through origin model here the value may or may not be equal to zero in a few cases it may even turn out to be a negative number so all of this is possible in this case so these are a few major differences between these two kinds of model okay now our next topic is scaling and units of measurement before moving on to this topic first of all we need to think about a question and that is uh, if a researcher is collecting the data and the unit of measurement is billions of dollars and there is another researcher that researcher is collecting the data and the units he is using is millions of dollars now the question is are the results of the regression going to be the same or not let's check here we can see that y i is equal to beta 1 hat plus beta 2 hat x i plus u i hat now this is y i star that is equal to w 1 y 1 and x i star is equal to w 2 x i and from these two we have reached to this now y i star is equal to beta 1 star plus beta 2 star hat x i star plus u i star hat so we have arrived at this now what do we see here is that w1 and w2 are scaling factors these are used to scale the values now y i is rescaled to y i star and the value of x i has been rescaled to x i star and for doing that we have used the values w1 and w2 so if we assume that y i the unit of y i was taken in billions of dollars and we need to convert it into millions of dollars in that case we are using w1 to scale it and we are taking the value of w1 and w2 to be 1000 so when we are multiplying these values we are able to rescale the value of y i and x x i now in our example the values of w1 and w2 are identical that is thousand but it may or may not be different in other cases it may be different in other cases depending on the situation okay now let's have a look at the relationship between beta 2 hat and beta 2 star hat so we can see here is that beta 2 star hat is equal to w1 upon w2 beta 2 hat and we can also see the relationship between beta 1 hat and beta 1 star hat so beta 1 star hat is equal to w1 beta 1 hat so all these relationships can be seen here through all this we can come to the conclusion that given the regression results based on one scale of measurement we can derive the results based on another scale of measurement so this is possible and that can happen when we know the values of w's that is w1 and w2 now let's see what happens when w1 is equal to w2 the case that we have just dealt with 
if w1 is equal to w2 then the slope coefficient that is beta 2 is standard error they are going to remain unaffected when we are going from yi xi to yi star and xi star so the slope coefficient and standard error in this case is going to remain unaffected but the intercept term the intercept term and its standard error are both multiplied by w1 so do the slope coefficient and its standard error are going to remain unaffected but the intercept and its standard error are both going to be multiplied by w1 now a different case it can be if the x scale is not changed so the scale of x is not changed but the scale of y is changed by the factor w1 in that case we would observe that the slope as well as the intercept coefficients and their respective standard errors all are going to be multiplied by the same factor that is w1 so in this case this is going to happen and the reverse case where the y scale remains unchanged but the x scale is changed by the factor w2 in this case what is going to happen is the slope coefficient and the and its standard error these two are going to be multiplied by factor 1 upon w2 but the intercept coefficient and its standard error they are going to remain unaffected so these three cases can be there coefficient beta 2 so the value of slope coefficient beta 2 can be calculated by this formula that is units of the dependent variable over units of the explanatory variable and beta 2 basically shows the rate of change regression on standardized variable now why do we need to standardize variables the reason behind this is we already know that the units in which the regressant and regressors are expressed affect the interpretation of the regression coefficient so we already know this and if we want to avoid this then we need to standardize our variables okay for doing that what we need to do is we have subtracted y bar from y i now y bar here represents sample mean of y so we have subtracted sample mean of y from y i and then we have divided sample standard deviation of y so this is how we get the standardized value of y i which is y i star and for getting standardized value of x i we need to do the same thing we are going to subtract x bar that is sample mean of x from xi and then divide this whole thing with the sample standard deviation of x one important property of a standardized variable is that its mean value is always zero and its standard deviation is always one so this is it